Hello. In this video, I will introduce Power BI calculation groups. Before I jump into theory, let me introduce the problem we're trying to solve. So here we have a um, simple sales data set where we're selling a bunch of products to a bunch of customers and uh, the sales occur on a certain date. And then for every sales, we record what was the sales amount, which is a dollar amount, what was the volume or a number of units that was sold. Uh, we also uh, record what was the cost of goods sold, COGS, and also the gross margin or the profit that we make uh, on each sale. Also here, I created a very quick report. Um, I have the, um, a, a trend chart at the bottom. Uh, if I click on the trend chart, you will see that I'm just training my sales uh, over time. And uh, here I have a card that's actually showing the total amount of volume. Why don't I add the sales amount to it? So we're looking at the same thing. So we're looking at uh, two and a half, some, some, somewhere thereabouts, uh, years worth of data, of sales data, and a total uh, sales amount in that period. Again, this is not a particularly informative report, but it'll help us uh, understand um, uh, what we're trying to solve here. So as you can see, um, this is a very simple model and we have just a few measures, sales, volume, margin, and COGS. However, um, uh, typically what we wanna do is we wanna do a lot more analysis around those measures. So for example, if we look at the sales, sometimes we would wanna compare sales this year to sales last year. We wanna calculate the year over year. We wanna calculate year over year percent. Then we'd want to look at it quarter to date, maybe year to date. We'd want to do year to date for um, uh, the values last year, year over year, and so forth. So what happens um, by me creating this year, last year, year over year, year over year percent, and so forth? I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have ten, uh, uh, five, ten versions of the sales calculation. I could also have sales forecast, sales budget, variance to those. So you can see how I can have a lot of measures that I have to create to tell my story. So if I only had one measure, you know, one measure becomes 10 measures. Now I have four measures. So I would have to then code 40 measures that have very similar math and look virtually identical. Um, and 40 measures um, is not still not that bad, but uh, I'm sure if you guys are watching this video, you probably have seen models with hundreds of measures. And I actually have one customer that has 20,000 measures in the model. So what problem are we trying to solve? Well, we don't want to create 20,000 measures. It takes a lot of time. Uh, it's unruly to maintain, very difficult to debug. And actually the performance of the model that has 20,000 measures suffers some. So what we would like to do is we would like to say, okay, we're gonna have only a handful of measures, but then we're gonna just, just copy the, uh, co uh, implement the logic for this year, last year, year over year, and so forth once. So we would like to implement that logic to calculate uh, all of those scenarios once, and then be able to use that logic with all of the measures that could use that, could use that logic. So here's a scenario uh, uh, specifically. So in this chart, I brought in sales. And what we wanna do is we wanna have a filter and uh, all of those time measures are implemented as uh, different options in this filter. So if I would like to see current year, I have select current year. And now it's showing sales for current year. If I would like to see the prior year, I click on the prior year and you will see the data change. Uh, if I want to see year over year variance, I click on that. Bam, now we're looking at year over year. We can look at uh, year over year percent and so forth. So I only, if you look at this chart, this, only, this chart only has sales uh, measure selected. However, I'm able to play with different slicer uh, values and show different uh, variations of that sales metric this year, last year, and so forth. And I had year to date, quarter to date, so you could see this um, this drop down could potentially, or um, uh, the slicer could potentially have a lot of different options. And then for example, if I now wanna do the same thing for volume, all I have to do is uncheck sales, bring in volume, and now we're doing the same thing for uh, volume. 
Okay, now that you understand the problem we're trying to solve, let's see how I solve that problem. And before I explain how I solve the problem, I need to make uh, explain a couple of caveats. So I am using, uh, for the, the purpose of this demonstration, uh, I'm using um, Visual Studio. So as you know, uh, there are several tools currently available to do development for Power BI and Azure and um, analysis services. Uh, I will not be specifically talking about an, uh, analysis services. I'm just gonna be calling everything Power BI now that it's becoming the superset of um, Power BI and analysis services. So I'm just gonna be saying calling everything Power BI uh, just to save time and make things easier. And in this particular case, I will be using, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Visual Studio. Um, uh, the reason I'm gonna be using Visual Studio is because today there's only two tools uh, out of the three that we have, Visual Studio, um, Tabular Editor, and uh, Power BI Desktop that we, can, that we use for modeling of Power BI. But in this particular case, uh, I will just use uh, Visual Studio. And in subsequent videos, we will take a look at uh, the tabular editor. Uh, at the time of this uh, recording, which is uh, May 2020, uh, calculation group feature is not yet available in Power BI Desktop. Uh, the rumor has it that it will be available sometime early to mid-summer. So um, most likely, if you want to do the same thing in the desktop, uh, if it will be available there, I'm not sure, but um, uh, we will also be able to do this. We are also able to do it in Tabular Editor and deploy it back into Power BI Desktop when Power BI Desktop supports it. So we will talk more about this in subsequent videos, but for now, I'm just gonna introduce that concept in Visual Studio. Okay, let's see how uh, what I had to do to create that, uh, that functionality uh, in Visual Studio. So, as you can see, we have um, a, a, an area in the UI that allows me to create calculation groups. I can just right click and say new calculation group. Uh, if you use tabular editor, there's also an area where you right click and say new calculation group. So in this in this case, I have a, a calculation group called time calc. Let's drill in. You will see that it has two um, areas underneath. One of them is called columns and the other one is called calculation items. So the um, column is, um, uh, there is a, when you create a calculation group, there's always one column created. You can rename that um, by uh, changing its name here. And you can also create another column here that's called ordinal. And ordinal is a special column that you are recommended to uh, hide, so it's not available. And that ordinal allows us to specify the order for this calculation item. So for example, here, you see that um, uh, the order of the calculation item, CY, PY, CY is current year, prior year, revenue, year over year, year over year percent. But if we go into Power BI, you see that they're ordered the way I want them to be ordered. So let me show you how that order is done. So CY, I have once I wanted to go first, PY, I wanted to go second, year over year, I want to go third, and year over year percent, I want to go fourth. So then revenue, uh, I'm not gonna be talking about this right now, um, but there's some cool features and cool uh, possibilities that uh, are opening up with this new uh, calculation group functionality of Power BI, so I will talk about that in subsequent videos. So how do we create a calculation item? All you need to do is right click and say new calculation item that creates the calculation item. So let's take a look and uh, click on on one of the calculation items. So here I have a calculation items called PY, prior year. So um, the way you add DEX to that is by finding expression in the properties and clicking on this uh, push button here with three dots that will bring up the editor. So here I have uh, some DEX that allows me to calculate uh, the value of my uh, measure uh, for the prior year. So what's important here is that there is a new function in DEX called selected measure that allows me to uh, basically pass the selected measure as a parameter to this DEX. Then I'm just using the same period last year, uh, very common function that everybody probably knows by now on how to calculate the year, uh, the prior year value. So by looking at this DEX and kind of looking how things are laid out here in the UI, 
of Visual Studio, you're probably thinking, well, what's the point? Uh, we can already create measures in Power BI. Why would I want to create calculation items? Well, there's a couple of things. Number one is obviously uh, the selected measure allows me to reuse, right? So it allows me to, uh, this prior year logic, work with any measure that was brought into the chart. There is another interesting here thing here is that we have the format string and the format string is also a DEX um, expression, right? So in this case, I have a static expression that returns a um, dollar amount. But in my subsequent videos, I will be talking about how powerful this feature is as it, be as it allows me to dynamically format my measure based on uh, user selection. And I will sh show you a quick glimpse of that later in the, in the video. So here, um, as you can see, I've created uh, a measure for every um, possibility, current year, prior year, year over year, year over year percent. And you will notice that um, these measures have different formatting where current year, prior year, and year over year are formatted as dollars, year over year, is formatted as a percent measure. So um, then um, you can go ahead and uh, refresh and redeploy. There is a lot of caveats, by the way, that come with making this work in uh, Visual Studio. It's not the most stable solution yet. Actually, the tabular editor um, is a lot more stable um, and mature in supporting this feature. Um, uh, compared to Visual Studio, but I wanted to do the inaugural video for calculation groups in a Microsoft tool, and then the subsequent videos uh, I will be mixing and matching different tools uh, as I'm trying to show different features of calculation groups. So now that we see uh, or had a chance to take a look at how those things are implemented uh, in the modeling side, let's understand um, what's happening from the reporting perspective. So this is the calculation group that you saw before called time calc. Again, here it is. Just want to make sure you guys can see it. Okay, so time calc is the calculation group. And uh, what we want to do is find it in the tool. Uh, as you can see from the end user perspective, time calc just looks like a normal, uh, just like a normal table, right? And for us to create a slicer, all we need to do is just drag this into the canvas and we can turn it into a slicer, right? So uh, again, from the end user perspective, calculation group just looks like a normal slicer with a column called, time, you know, whatever we want to call it. So here it's called time measure. Let me make sure that you guys can see it, time measure. And then if I go to Visual Studio, you see time measure is the column that's part of, part of the calculation groups. And again, time measure uh, is not hidden. Let me make it easier for you to see. And then if I click on ordinal, you see that um, the this column is hidden and the name is basically have to specify and uh, it, it has to be ordinal. Okay, let's go back to Power BI. So uh, yes, that's all I had to do. So basically now all you have to do is you drag the measure that you want to interact with our time calculation here into the chart. So here I have um, sales in in this card and I have uh, volume in this chart. And then um, as you can see, all I need to do is just click on different um, uh, values. So all of these things are called calculation items. To me, they're just uh, exposed as uh, values in the time measure column. And as I pick different things, you could see that the card and the chart update. So what's interesting is, is this year over year piece. So you see that year over year is a percent point and you see that percent point versus dollar sign works very well on the card. However, it looks like there is still a bug in Power BI desktop where uh, the percent point works in the card and actually works in a bunch of other charts, but it does not work in the trend chart. So this is just a, um, a line chart here and you could see that it's showing the percents, but it does not format the percent the way the card formats it. So hopefully Microsoft will uh, fix it in the subsequent releases. Uh, this is it for the introduction to the calculation groups. As you can see, it's a very uh, powerful uh, modeling feature of Power BI. 
Uh, it's a relatively new feature of Power BI, and I think uh, one of the most powerful features that's been added to the uh, analysis services slash Power BI um, technology. And uh, I'm looking forward to some of the possibilities and scenarios that we're able to fi uh, to to solve with this uh, with this feature, because uh, it's still fairly early um, in uh, its support uh, for Microsoft. Uh, again, some of the drawbacks um, are it's not yet supported in the Power BI desktop as of May 2020. Uh, hopefully, June, July of 2020, that support will be available in the Power BI desktop. Uh, we're not clear whether the authoring experience will be supported in Power BI desktop. Um, if not, um, and you have a Power BI desktop model, then the tool to maintain it will be a tabular editor. And then uh, we can also create calculation, calculation groups and calculation items using Visual Studio. So in the subsequent videos, we will be taking a more detailed look at the calculation groups. Uh, we will be implementing some of the more advanced calculations and uh, functionality with calculation groups. Hope you find, found this uh, video educational and please come back for more videos. Thanks, bye.